everybody. So we're back and looking at an um, at the first stage of our accounting cycle where we have to journalize transactions. And the resource we're using for this is Financial and Managerial Accounting by Kimmel, Weigand and Kieso. The specific chapter is chapter number two. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with our finance and accounting resources. And comment below if you need help with any additional questions or resources in this area. So we're going to be working on problem set B, and this is problem 2-2B. Judy Dench is a licensed dentist, and during the first month of the operation of her business, the following events and transactions occurred. So we've got a series of transactions here during the month of April. Um, Judy uses the following chart of accounts. We've got a series of accounts over here, and these are the accounts that we're going to use as we identify the journal transactions. We're not going to be using the account numbers as a part of our and standardization for the process, but that's not a problem. It won't affect the actual accounting process. If we look at the instructions, the instructions state to journalize the transactions, part A, part B, post to the ledger accounts, and part C, prepare a trial balance on April 30th, 2014. We're going to be doing this in Excel. And uh, so we've got our layout over here. And this is our journal layout. Right next to this is our ledger. and. In front of that is our trial balance. We're going to be doing part A, B, and C of the question in one go. So 2-2B, we're going to look at April 1st. That's 104. And our first transaction is that Stockholders has invested $40,000 cash in exchange for common stock. Now remember your normal balances are critical for understanding how this question takes place or how to journalize your entries. And in the normal balance accounts, our, um, the normal balance for your assets is on your debit side. So your assets, expenses, and your dividends have a normal balance on the debit side. Your liabilities, your equity, and your revenues have a normal balance on the credit side, which means that each of these accounts increases on this particular side. The first, in the first transaction, when we invest cash in exchange for common stock, that is an increase of an asset, the cash account, for an increase in equity in the common stock account. So we'll take cash to be debited and common stock to be credited. Um, so this is $40,000 to be debited in cash and 40,000 to be credited in common stock. And then on the 1st of April again, it says we hired a secretary receptionist at a salary of $600 per week payable monthly. Now keep in mind over here that because no money has exchanged hands, no services have been provided, nothing is owed and nothing is provided. Therefore, there is no business transaction taking place over here. We won't be doing a journal entry. On the 2nd of April, we hire, we paid office rent for the month for $1,400. Now when we pay office rent, that means there's an outflow of cash, that is the decrease in the asset and an incurrence of rent expense. So we're going to do rent expense debit to cash credit and the amount is 1400 debit and 1400 credit you'll see that the dollar amount or the currency amount will always be the same in both the debit and the credit entry on the 3rd of april Purchased dental supplies on account from Halo Company, 5200 Now, when we purchase supplies on account, again, you can see all of the accounts listed over here. That is an increase in the asset of supplies, and so we debit supplies. And against that, it is an increase of liability, and so we will credit our accounts payable. And the amount that we got the supplies for was $5,200. $5,200. And then on the 10th of April, provided dental services and build insurance companies for $6,600. So if you provide dental services and we are bill, billing insurance companies, that means that our revenue is generated, but we have yet to receive the money. That means that our asset of accounts receivable will be increasing and accounts receivable will be debited. And against this, our service revenue is generated. And the amount here is um, $6,600. $6,600, there we go. On the 11th of April, received $1,000 cash advance from Rich Welk for an implant. Now, when you receive a cash advance, it means we've yet to provide the service. We've not yet done that. So we're essentially generating a liability. 
um, because we've received the money that's cash our asset is increasing and against this our liability of unearned service revenue has also increased we've yet to provide this service the amount of money that we received for this was a thousand dollars so a thousand in debit and a thousand in credit on the 20th of April received $2,100 cash for services completed and delivered to Phil Steuben so when we've provided the service and received the cash, that's an increase in the asset of cash and a recognition of revenue. So service revenue is to be credited. Cash debited, service revenue credited for $2,100. $2,100. On the 30th of April, we paid secretary receptionist for the month $2,400. This means that essentially we're paying a salary and wage expense. So the incurrence of an expense is to be debited and cash or your asset is going to decrease and so that will be credited so salaries and wages expense again we're not making up these counts along the way we're just looking at the list that is provided to us over here salaries and wages expenses to be debited and cash is to be credited and the amount of salary is two thousand four hundred dollars and the last entry that we have for the 30th of april again is paid 1900 halo company for accounts payable due because we've paid a liability off that indicates a decrease in liability that is, that is to be debited and a decrease in an asset that is also to be credited. So accounts payable will decrease and that will be debited by 1900 and against this our cash will be credited. Because we've paid it off, it's decreasing the asset by 1,900. And so as you can see, all of our entries are done here. Now we're gonna go ahead and expand this Excel file so we can comfortably convert all of the entries, journal entries into our ledger and then further into our transactions, uh, sorry, further into our trial balance. Um, to complete the entire question. Now, the ledger that you see over here is a four column ledger. So we've got a date, we've got a debit column, a credit column, and a balance. And we'll create this for each of our individual accounts here. And as we, as we continue to enter the accounts, it'll become easier to ensure that we've accounted for everything. So for the first two entries, we've got a cash account and a common stock account. So you can see here we've created a cash account and a common stock account. And the date is 1st of April. And here we are going to be debiting cash for $40,000. And so the balance will be $40,000. And same date, so 1st of April, we're going to be crediting $40,000 into common stock, and so the balance will be $40,000. Then when we see the second transaction, we've got no note over here. On the 2nd of April is our next transaction. So we're gonna go ahead and put up a rent expense account over here, because that's a new account. So on the 2nd of April, we are debiting 1,400 in our rent expense account, and so the balance is going to be 1,400. And we are going to be crediting cash. So on the 2nd of April, we're going to be crediting cash by $1,400. That'll decrease our balance, so we'll take the balance minus our credit amount. That's 38,600 in our running balance for cash. Our next entry is on the 3rd of April and requires a supplies account. We don't have a supplies account, so we're going to make it. And we don't have an accounts payable account either. We're going to go ahead and add that over here as well. Okay, so for the supplies account on the 3rd, oops, sorry, my bad, on the 3rd of April. Okay, so on the 3rd of April, our supplies account is being debited by 5,200. That means the balance will be 5,200. And our accounts payable on the exact same date is going to be credited by 5,200. This is money that we owe. And so our balance will be 5,200. The next entry is on the 10th of April for an accounts receivable. We don't have an accounts receivable so far either. We're going to go ahead and create that. So accounts receivable. And this accounts receivable goes against a service revenue. We don't have that account either, so we're going to go ahead and create a service revenue account as well. Service revenue. There we go. And the date of our transaction is on the 10th of April. 
So on the 10th of April, our accounts receivables to be debited by 6,600. That gives us a balance of 6,600. And our service revenue on the exact same date, so the 10th of April, is to be credited by 6,600. And so the balance will be 6,600. Our next entry after the 10th of April is on the 11th of April for cash to unearned service revenue. So we have a cash account already, we're not worried about that, but we don't have an unearned service revenue account. We're gonna go ahead and create that, okay? So cash on the 11th of April is to be debited by $1,000 and this will increase our balance. So we'll just do 38,600 plus 1,000 and we get 39,600. And against that unearned service revenue on the 11th of April is going to be credited by $1,000. And so the balance on that is going to be $1,000. On the 20th of April, we've got cash to service revenue. We've got both cash account and service revenue account over here, so nothing to worry about. We're gonna go ahead and just enter it in there. And so on the 20th of April, our cash account is debited by $2,100, which is going to take our 39600 and add into that our new debit amount of $2,100. We get $41,700 as our running balance in our cash account. And again, service revenue on the exact same date, so for the 20th of April, we have uh, $2,100 being credited. So that's $6,600 plus $2,100 and we get 8,700. On the 30th of April, we've paid salaries and wages expense. We don't have an account for this yet. We're gonna go ahead and create that. So salaries and wages expense. And this goes against a cash account, which we already have. So we're just gonna go ahead and enter the date there. So on the 30th of April, our expense, our salaries and wages expenses to be debited by 2,400, which keeps our balance at 2,400. And against this, our cash on the 30th of April, is going to be credited by 2,400. And so I'll take my balance of uh, 41,700 and I will deduct, because it's crediting, I will deduct my 2,400. I'm left with 39,300. Now real quick, I'm gonna just go ahead and enter, insert a couple of rows over here just to make sure that this doesn't get too crowded, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and shift those down. There we go. Okay, so we're done with the 30th of April entry, the first one. Now we'll do the second one, which is accounts payable to cash. We've already got an accounts payable over here and we've got a cash over here. We're gonna go ahead and enter that straight in there. So on the 30th of April, we're going to be debiting our accounts payable by 1,900, which we know reduces our liability. So we'll take our 5,200 and decrease that by 1,900. We're left with a balance of 3,300. And then on the 30th of April, again, our cash is going to be credited by 1,900, which will decrease our overall balance. So 39,300 minus 1,900, and we're left with 37,400. All right, so this is basically how we convert all of our journal entries to our ledger. This is where we're posting them. Okay, let's take a quick look at our question over here. We don't have any other hint except for a trial balance total, so we're gonna go ahead and keep hoping for the best as we put our ledger balances into our trial balance. That's part C of the question. Here, we're just gonna enter each of the accounts one by one. I like to bold the account once it's entered. Um, that helps me keep keep a record of what it is that I've already entered and what I have not entered. So our cash final balance was 37,400. Um, assets have a normal balance on the debit side. Our common stock has a balance of 40,000 and equity has a normal balance on the credit side. So both of these are um, done. Now we put in our rent expense. Our rent expense, all expense accounts have a normal balance on the debit side. There's a balance of 1,400. And supplies is an asset with normal balance on the debit side. It's 5,200. We can go ahead and bold those as well. Just to remember that we've already entered them. Then we've got our accounts payable. This is a liability with a normal balance on the credit side. So that's 3,300. And accounts receivable, which is an asset and this has a normal balance on the debit side for 6,600. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt that one more time. 
just to remember that we've already done this service revenue and unearned service revenue and this is a little tricky service revenue is a revenue account with a normal balance on the credit side 8700 and unearned service revenue is also well technically it's a liability account but it's also got a normal balance on the credit side so we're going to go ahead and put one thousand dollars in our unearned service revenue going to bold that to recall that we've already entered those and the last account that we have left is salaries and wages expense it's a expense account at two thousand four hundred dollars with a normal balance on the debit side so salaries and wages expense for debit two thousand four hundred let's just cross check that once two thousand four hundred and two thousand four hundred let's go ahead and total up both of these sides um, and in an ideal world both of these sides will be the same all right hoping for the best and the total of our credit side and our debit side match and we are done let's just do a quick cross check and make sure that that cross checks with the question trial balance total is fifty-three thousand, and we are done with this particular question thank you very much for listening and don't forget to comment below if you need help with anything else regarding this particular question or any additional resources don't forget to like and subscribe we'll be back with more thank you